Hello everyone, it's Easter Sunday. I'm too old for Easter eggs. But I do have a bar of chocolate anyway. That's how cool I am. So, this week we're discussing literature, and specifically classic literature. And as a scientist, I'm not made to read literature anymore. No one says, sit down, read this book, and tell me what you think the themes are. I am, however, made to read journals. Do we get, I suppose, what you can consider a classic journal? In science, obviously, it moves quickly. I, most of the time, will not read a paper older than, say, 2000, often, because the method will either be wrong or someone will have since done an experiment that either proved it right or wrong. So I tend not to use papers older than that. But occasionally, there will be a paper from the 60s or the 70s that is considered really important. And I guess that's kind of our equivalent of classics. That paper did something that, even today, is still relevant, or it hasn't been improved upon the method is the same. It tends to come up mostly in animal behaviour, where you're looking more at animals rather than, like, molecules and things that rely on technology. So, in terms of classical literature, I have um, almost an entire shelf on my bookcase of classical literature. I know it's classical because the covers say things like Penguin Classics, or you know, puffin classics, or, you know, just kind of, just general kind of classic things going on there. And I bought the books not because they were classics, but because they were about two or three pounds, and they sounded interesting from the back cover. And some of them I have read, such as Animal Farm, and Brave New World, and The Call of the Wild, and what else? I read Badge of Courage, which was okay, I guess. And others I am getting through, like the Adventures and Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, which I really enjoy. And others I haven't even started, like Don Coyote, which is like, this big! It's massive! You no, know, the reason I picked it up was, well, it was, actually, it was only a pound. That was probably why. It was this big and it was a pound. So, you know, if a book is this big and it's a pound, that's a good deal in my mind. I just picked it up. I don't even know what it's about. I just really only got it because it was a pound. So, that's my reason for picking up classics. I, I've, I've had to read a... I suppose some classics. What I'm assuming we're discussing is classics. That's kind of that whole genre of books, and they always make up those lists: the hundred books you should read before you die, the thousand books that you must read in your lifetime. It's like you know things like Romeo and Juliet always seem to grow up, and I'm like, I've had to read that three times now. I don't want to read it again. <laughs> now, doesn't mean though, because I don't like Romeo and Juliet, that I can't appreciate what it has given us in literary terms, I probably could explain more, but I don't know, I can't think. However, I can think of times where it is not possible to appreciate classics, because you can't understand the classics, and that is the case of when I was 12, having to read Chaucer. You don't know what Chaucer in English looks like? Go Google it! It's... For 12-year-olds who struggle with Shakespeare, Chaucer is not the next step up that you should go to. You should just stick with Shakespeare, or even better, back away and come back to it later. I could not understand Chaucer in English. I tried. I really sat there. I was like, okay, let's get into this. What is this language? I don't get it at all. If it wasn't for the fact that we were given the English on the side, I would never have sussed what those stories were about because I'd just be sitting there going, what is this madness? This isn't English. This is not anything plausible or easy to understand. And to be honest, I didn't appreciate it, and I certainly have not really ever appreciated being made to read things since, especially in England, the one size fits all, every child is going to read this same novel. Well, not everyone is capable of reading or understanding or wanting to read that same novel or play, and I can think of countless times where I've been made to read something, going, well, this is tedious, I don't want to read this, or I've already read this. It was really great. I enjoy reading for pleasure rather than reading to sort of work out any literary thing. I know that often authors will put in things, the curtains are blue to reflect the mood kind of thing. But most of the time, I enjoy reading because I can read 150 pages a minute. It's the one thing that I can do ridiculously well. I just enjoy reading, reading quickly, getting these books down because they cost two pounds and I bought way too many of them. I think it's perfectly possible to appreciate a book because it's a classic and at the same time not enjoy the book, but still appreciate it. Because no one makes me read books now, I only read books that I think I will enjoy. And if I don't, no big deal. Or, I did enjoy the book, I'll read it again. And often if I enjoy one book by that author, I will go and seek out more, because often the style of writing is the same. And so ends the little video where I rambled through what I think possibly was what we were discussing. Hope everyone has a good Easter, doesn't eat too much chocolate, and I'll see you all next week.